The regular session of the City of Council of the City of Pleasant, Texas will now come to order June 5th, 2014 at 7.02 p.m. Item number one, you need to call to order. Item number two is invocation followed by the pledge. And the uh, invocation will be done by Mr. Bob Bird of the Navigator Disciple Ministries. I know you all know this, that the uh, Bible teaches that we're to pray for our leaders. And I want you to know that I appreciate the opportunity to do that. It means a lot to me personally. And uh, for the Science family, I'd like to offer a special prayer. Okay. Thank you, sir. Father, we come before you uh, tonight very mindful of the importance of prayer. We know that you hear us. We know that you answer prayer. Lord, we don't always pray according to your will, but you answer according to your will. We thank you that it takes it out of our hands and puts it into the hands of a loving Father. Lord, don't know the needs of uh, Abraham, the science family, but you do. And we ask, Lord, that uh, you would undertake on their behalf. And Lord, if there's healing, emotionally, physically, spiritually, we ask that you would do that. Give comfort where comfort is needed. Give encouragement where encouragement is needed. And Lord, might the family feel the love that comes from God during this time. And Father, we look at the agenda here, and there's a a lot on the plate. But we ask that the Spirit of God would strongly influence the decisions that have been made, that are in the process of being made. And Lord, with the growth and expansion that's taking place in our city, we know that there are tensions. We know that not everyone agrees with everything. And so we just ask that you would make us big people, that differences would not become divisive, but that they would strengthen relationships. And Lord, we thank you that uh, we can pray to you, ask for your guidance, and commit ourselves to that. Pray for each leader, might the Spirit of God be their guidance. Thank you for the reports in the paper that tell us that the policemen are having drug busts and protecting us as citizens of this city. We're thankful that the city is working toward becoming a better city. Lord, help us to become better citizens. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 To face the flag, hand over heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Thank you, Mr. Bird. Item number three is a roll call. Ms. Israel. Mr. Sines. Mr. Best. Present. Ms. Pacifica. Present. Mr. Gagos. Here. Item number four is the consent agenda. Uh, item number uh, A under four is approval of the minutes of the regular session of May 15, 2014. B is approval of the minutes of the special session of May 28, 2014. C is approval of the final plat for... Bay. Pleasanton Retail, hope I said that right. Item number five is approval of the final plat for the Pleasanton High School subdivision. Item number E is approval of the preliminary plat for Howard subdivision. Item number F is approval of the primary plat for Louisiana Liquid Services subdivision. Item number G is approval of the preliminary plat for Maverick subdivision. And item number H is approval of the preliminary plat for Oak Haven subdivision, or Oak Haven apartment, uh, apartment subdivision. Mayor, Mayor. Mr. Gagos. I move to approve the consent agenda um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Second. We moved and second to approve the, the consent agenda A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Any discussion? None proceed to the vote. Those in favor of motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Consent agenda is approved. Item number five is ordinances and resolution. Item number A is the reading. 
First reading of ordinance number 14-1109, adopting impact fee, land use assumption, and impact fee capital improvement plan. And ordinance number, then we'll get there. Ordinance number 14-1109 is an ordinance adopting impact fee, land use, assumption and impact fee capital improvement plans in accordance with the provisions of chapter 395 of the Texas Local Government Code. Again, it's just a first reading. Item B is reading and adoption of resolution number 131-14, establishing a place, date, and time to hold public hearing for citizens' comments relating to uh, imposition of impact fees and directing certain activities. And resolution, oh man, you'll put the impact study behind it. That's a lot of pages. I forgot y'all and put the entire impact study behind it. <laughs> Item number 131-14 is a resolution of the City of Pleasant, Texas establishing a place, date, and time to hold a public hearing for citizens' comments relating to the imposition of impact fees and directing certain activities as required under Texas Local Government Code Chapter 395. Mayor. Mr. Gagos. I move to, uh, I move to approve to adopt resolution number 131-14 establishing a place, date, and time to hold a public hearing for citizen um, comment relating to the, imp to the imposition of impact fees <coughs> and directing certain activities. Second. It's been moved and seconded to adopt the resolution number 131-14, establishing a place, date, and time to hold a public hearing for citizens' comments related to the imposition of impact fees and directing certain activities. Any discussion? If none, will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Resolution is adopted. <coughs> Item number C is reading adoption of City of Pleasanton, Texas, resolution number 132-14, declaring its intent to annex certain properties within its extraterritorial jurisdiction. And resolution number 13-14 is a resolution of the City of Pleasanton, Texas, declaring its intent to annex certain properties within its extraterritorial jurisdiction and establishing a place, date, and time to hold public hearings for citizens' comments related to the annexation of the same property, directing City staff to carry out certain administrative requirements and require under Texas Local Government Code 42.062 and establishing a date for the initiation of annexation proceedings. Mayor. Mr. Gagos. I move to approve the adoption of the, um, adoption of the City of Pleasanton, Texas, resolution number 132-14, declaring its in, intent to annex certain properties within the extraterritorial jurisdiction. Second. I moved and seconded to adopt City of Pleasanton, Texas, resolution number 132-14, declaring its intent to annex certain properties within its extraterritorial jurisdiction. Any discussion? None will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Resolution is adopted. <laughs> Item number six is citizens' comments. If you're a citizen of or a taxpayer to the city of Pleasanton, you may speak at this time. Please keep your comments to three minutes, and they cannot pertain to one of tonight's uh, agenda items, and know that council and staff may not comment. And we do have two people. Uh, Ms. Perguson. Inside expansion of the museum. Uh, we have that as an agenda item tonight. Okay. I mean, you call me for citizen. Uh, your agenda item is. Yeah, you have. An <laughs> it's all right. You signed up under here. I thought you had something else. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, you only have to put your name on here if it's not one of tonight's okay. agenda items. Okay. okay, that's my fault. Uh, Chuck and Debbie Schaefer. Thank You're on the agenda. Okay. And Ms. Pernado's on the agenda. Okay. So, any other citizens' comments? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh, here we go. I'm sorry. We go, Maris. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, uh, I own several properties here in Pleasanton. My name is Miguel Maris. Uh, Mr. Gagos is aware of a, a situation out off of uh, Franklin Street. We had some flooding done uh, last uh, Saturday. Uh, there was some work being done by the city uh, just west of our location that we feel was a contributing factor. Uh, it caused damage to, to my home, the home of Danny and uh, Becky uh, Yamas next door at 600 Franklin, and I think uh, Mr. Garcia at 615 Franklin. So there were several homes that were, that were flooded. Um, their home was more than mine, but there was a, 
quite a bit of damage to all of our homes and just want to make the rest of the council aware of that problem. Um, some of those uh, culverts were not cleared out and some of it was, everything was cleared out, all the vegetation, which we feel was a contributing factor that caused, uh, obviously the, the water had nothing to slow it down. So I just wanted to make that a matter of record. We are in the process of, uh, started uh, already uh, <clears throat> filing some claims with the city. Some letters have been submitted and there will be some other, other things, uh, other um, issues, uh, I guess paperwork and bids coming in uh, for that. So thank you. Thank you. Other comments? None will proceed to item number seven, which is departmental reports. As submitted this evening, Mayor. And including moving on to item number eight is. Including the manager's message. Okay, well, I actually have something to say today. Okay. Uh, I just, right before the meeting, Mr. Bird came up to me and uh, handed me this plaque, and it says a certificate of appreciation. It is with grateful thanks that we award the City of Pleasanton for your generous support and dedication to the second annual Rockin' on the River Music Festival. It is through your guidance, patience, and unselfish efforts that promote hope in our community and salvation to the lost. And uh, that's the ninth day of November 2013. Thank you, Mr. Bird. The only other item I have is the meeting that we had unless there's any objection. Uh, we have a meeting next Thursday for the, I can't remember which one that one is. We've talked about it all day, Mr. Pearson. It, it's the uh, Crestline to IH 37 project. It's a work session with the council. Does anybody have an objection to moving at the same time, but on Wednesday? On Wednesday or Tuesday? Tuesday. It was Tuesday. Uh, the the uh, consultants and Mr. McClaney cannot make it Tuesday. Wednesday. I, I have no problem. If there's no objections, we'll move the meeting. 6 p.m. That's what we had normal. Yeah, okay. we'll just just move the date. Okay. And okay. That date will be what? Uh, I think it's the tenth. No, okay. the eleventh is the Wednesday. Oh, that's right, Wednesday. Yeah. The eleventh. All right, that's all I have. Item number ten: special recognition for employees for their efforts during the recent Memorial Day weather. Councilman Gagos. Yes, <clears throat> as we all know, we had this really bad storm on Monday, May the twenty-sixth, uh, on Memorial Day. And I woke up about six, about 3.30 a.m. and I could not go back to sleep. So by 4.15 I was in the truck touring the town to see how the community center library was holding up. <laughs> and while I was, I saw all the city staff out there uh, and they were out uh, putting up barricades, making sure our community was safe and monitoring our sewer. Uh, systems at different locations and they were just all over town so I just wanted to um, thank them for and uh, recognize them for their loyalty to the city and their commitment to the city uh, to make it safe for all of us and also the police department was out at different intersections when the lights were off uh, directing traffic so they were out there also and also the fire department, I think, uh, was also called out several times, maybe for some rescues. Um, and I just, um, you know, and then the city staff, I've met with Mr. Pearson and Sid and the, um, who else, um, John Metting and uh, Weezar, because of the flooding that uh, Mr. Mattis was talking about in my district, that I did have some homes get flooded. Um, and. Um, I want to thank them also for taking time uh, from their schedule to meet with me on, on this concern. And um, I just, it makes me proud to be part of the, the city council, uh, of the governing body, to have such wonderful people working for us. And uh, I really sincerely thank them for their commitment because it was not really very safe to be out there and they were out there working hard. Mayor. Thank you. Item number 11 is recognition of employees for education certificates and license department heads. I'll defer to Chief Sanchez and Public Works Director Mr. Weasar for the recognition of these folks. a couple of employees that uh, that stepped up on the wastewater plant side uh, we've had several employees that have been out there testing and trying to get their licensing uh, one of them especially with uh, Ray Reyes 
Uh, he's one of the ones that has been trying to get his test uh, uh, and pass his Class C license for for a couple of for a couple of tries already. Uh, he he was persistent and uh, he he didn't give up and uh, he has now uh, gotten his Class C wastewater license. So Ray, Ray Williams is one of them. have Gabriel Guerra who could make it tonight because of his daughter's graduation but Gabriel Guerra has gotten his class B <laughs> wastewater so that's one of the high classes there too so Gabriel Guerra Sorry, isn't, it, isn't it correct there's only about 18 percent of the people in the state that take that class B wastewater that pass it on the first try yes and this was Gabriel's first try right this was his first try and he and he just got it on his first try so that was that was amazing to me. <coughs> uh, Chris Hayen is the other uh, employee he's one of the newest employees who just who just stepped in and uh, took took the classes and got his uh, test the first try so he's got his class D uh, wastewater license on that one so Chris Hayen, <laughs> That's it for our employees. Thank you. Thank you. Good to hear. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Good evening. Thanks. Uh, I want to recognize Sergeant David Jimenez, uh, Patrol Sergeant David Jimenez. He just received his advanced peace officer license, and he exemplifies what a good patrol sergeant should be. He's a team player. <laughs> and we're very glad to have him, and we're very proud of his accomplishment. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you. you. Item number 12 discussion action concerning the adoption of excess fill soil at the wastewater treatment plant. Our public works director and city manager. Mayor, we'll just quickly ask that uh, we get direction from the council to offer some of the excess fill soil. This is a result of of street repairs it's a result of new wastewater uh, collection lines being installed and water distribution lines we continue to have excess soil as we continue to build new lines through the city and build rebuild some of the intersections several folks have asked us if we would donate it to them we told them we needed from direction from council to open it up for anybody to come get it so we're just asking for direction from council to allow folks to come pick that up uh, at this point we have no plans on expending city personnel's time or equipment to load that soil. Um, and we're just asking for direction to do that. Mayor? Cicero. Uh Yes, I'd like to move to uh, direct the city manager to go ahead and donate any excess fill soil at the wastewater treatment plant that uh, they deem necessary. Second. We moved and seconded to direct the city manager to donate excess fill soil at the wastewater treatment plant. He's Deems necessary? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any discussion? None proceeded to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed to the same sign. Motion carries. Item number 13 is presentation and discussion concerning an economic development project for the city of Pleasanton. It's our city manager and developer. Um, I wanted to introduce one of the developers that's uh, supported the city of Pleasanton for well over some 30 months now. Uh, some 30 months or so ago, uh, the city secretary asked me about my second day here, when are we going to get an IHOP? <laughs> uh, that started the quest. Uh, so many of our citizens have asked that same question. If there's one thing we've marketed from an economic development perspective to any developer that walks in, if you can figure out how to build a breakfast restaurant here, our existing citizens will support it. To coin a term by one of our real estate agents, we can buy a taco anywhere in town, but we can't hardly buy a biscuit. So I want to introduce Asif Mahmoud. They've been great working partners with the city, and he has a special announcement tonight. Asif. It's tough to be standing between the Honorable Mayor, the City Council, and all you good folks of Pleasanton, and the first game of the NBA championship so I'm gonna, <laughs> so make it so, so I'm, I'm gonna keep it short I really had a lot of, I had a lot of things to say to you but I, I am gonna allow me just a couple of minutes because I'm very enthusiastic about what I'm gonna talk to you about and I think you will too because a lot of I've seen a lot of developers come in including myself and do projects that while they have uh, increased the property tax base in the city and while they have perhaps even increased some uh, sales tax tax receipts in the city, 
but a lot of those projects have actually been for the benefit of the oil industry. And, uh, and they have not directly benefited as, as directly as they could citizens of Pleasanton. I'm happy to tell you that we have a project uh, that I'm going to tell you about in a minute that all of the uh, citizens of the city of Pleasanton can, can sink their teeth into. No pun intended. <laughs> So um, first, uh, give, uh, give uh, credit to where credit is due. So Bruce, it's his idea. He's the one that planted the idea in my mind. And he said, it's great that you're building these fine apartments, and we have built Chaparral Place apartments that you may have seen off of 97. Uh, we have been doing very well with them. Thank you to all the people that have supported us. So the idea originated from Bruce. But it could not have been brought to fruition uh, without the support of his team. So Bruce has an excellent team. I want you to know that they have really open, welcomed us to Pleasanton. They have made all their resources available. I see some familiar faces, Director of Public Works, Johnny, uh, City Manager John, and, and many other people of their staff that have supported us and welcomed us and, and facilitated our projects uh, here before. So what I'm here to announce today is that uh, in about two or three weeks, we are going to break ground on a restaurant which is going to be setting the new bar in, in uh, Pleasanton. It's going to be the finest restaurant in town, I guarantee you. It's going to be a first-class facility. It's going to hire a lot of local people. I'll talk a little bit about that. It's a, it's a franchise. It's a breakfast-focused family focused franchise called Village Inn. Oh. And uh, Village Inn. <laughs> and and uh, you, you mentioned Denny's or IHOP. I'm here to tell you that this is superior to Denny's and it's superior to IHOP. And, and when you see the finished product, you'll say, no, this is no IHOP or Denny's. This is a Village Inn. Right. We hope to build many more of these in South Texas. This is our pilot project. The franchisor is very excited about it. Uh, they are out of Denver, Colorado, and we have already selected the management team, and four members of our management team of this restaurant are going for a 10-week training uh, session in, uh, in Denver, Colorado. Cool. So uh, uh, the Village Inn is, is truly uh, part of your economic development portfolio. Uh, it's going to hire between 40 and 50 people. So this is a very labor-intensive operation. We hope to hire as many local people as we can. And I'm here to tell you that we are going to give each employee a wonderful place to work. We are going to treat them with dignity, and we are going to give them more than the minimum wage. We are going to give them a living wage. Because it's very, very difficult for people to make ends meet. There's a lot of uh, minimum wage jobs, but people just really are always on the ragged edge trying to get to those jobs trying to feed their families, and I think that what we are going to do is we are going to share more of our bottom line with the employees, because we think that's how you cultivate uh, a productive people, happy people, loyal people, and that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for a restaurant that is going to have a lot of turnover. So uh, we are definitely going to pay above market wages to the people. And so this is a, a facility that you all can brag on when other developers come to town or, or companies that are wanting to establish businesses in Pleasanton, because I tell you that the, the bet that I placed on, on Pleasanton starting 30 months ago, uh, I was an executive at a large oil company that is big in, Pleasant, in uh, the Eagle Court Shale. Um, I got the inside information on, on kind of where things were going, and I can tell you that Pleasanton is turning into the hub of the Eagle Court Shale. You have competition from a, a couple of other towns, but I think hands down, Pleasanton has a lot of things going for it. Pleasanton has the good folks of Pleasanton, the leadership of Pleasanton. It's got the nice location. It's got health care. It's got amenities. And now it's going to have a village in. <laughs> <laughs> so, Amen. Asif, don't say anything else about yourself. We wanted to keep you as our secret. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we don't know that yet. We will let the customers tell us how, how, 
uh, many hours we need to be open. But I can tell you one thing, we will open at 4 a.m. Uh -huh. That's good. Oh. So it's all about, and everything that, that you're going to see on the menu, and I'm going to share uh, the menu with you. In just a minute, I'm going to use your advanced uh, audio right. uh, video facilities to show you that. In just a second, don't. <laughs> Make sure I've, I've covered everything that, okay, so the city of Pleasanton is a city of oaks and friendly folks, right? Mm -hmm. So there was a, there's a heritage oak tree on our property. I don't know how old it is, maybe it's 200 years old, maybe when this uh, area was still Mexico, that tree was growing. So. That tree happens to sit right in front of our restaurant entrance. So the franchisor said to us, and it's got a four foot diameter, which is, to me, it's just amazing. When you have a living thing like that, it has to be respected, it has to be nurtured and cultivated. The franchisor told us that that tree had to come down because it was a visual obstruction to the restaurant. And we said to them, if you want to start your business in South Texas on the wrong foot, <laughs> That's one sure way of doing it, is to cut down that oak tree. And, and uh, I, now technically we may have uh, argued with the city because we got grandfathered in before there was a tree ordinance in Pleasanton, but I had zero appetite for that because I wanted to save that tree and we fought back and they said fine. So that was my first run in with the franchisor was about the oak tree. <laughs> And it's going to be this lovely tree in the front where if people are needing to wait or socialize, because we do expect a lot of business. Now, we, I told you we are planning to break ground in about three weeks. We plan to open on November 1st. It is our intent to open before Thanksgiving. We think it's a great time of the year. It's a great time to feast. And as I'm going to show you on the menu, this restaurant is very big on pies. Mm -hmm. I mean, you will not believe the, the selection and the quality of pies that they have. And when you walk into the restaurant, the first thing you're going to see is a showcase of pies. And, and so we think that there's no better time to start than Thanksgiving. The first couple of days are going to be for friends and family on our ticket. On, at our expense. So what we want you to do, and I'm here to invite you, you will know how it's coming along and when it's opening, we'll have the, we'll have the advertising, we'll have the announcements, but, but I'm here to invite you and your family and others, good folks, to come. There's a couple of days that we are going to dedicate to them. One of those two days, I believe we want to just dedicate to those people that are integral to making this city what it is. We want to invite our friends in, in law enforcement. We want to invite our friends in fire protection. We want to invite our friends from the city. We want to invite uh, the, the scouts. We want to invite all these groups. And we want your guidance, Bruce, as always, right? To, to, to make a list of the people that we want to invite because we want to be good citizens of the community and we want to be engaged in the community. So we will be doing a lot of things as we go forward, working with the community and investing in the community and supporting teams and uh, volunteer efforts and, and whatever it is that we can do to be good citizens of, of Pleasanton. So we look forward to having you. Now when you enter into a, 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 a fine, the fine restaurant and you sit down, the server is going to bring you a menu which is going to look like this. So this is, this is their menu. Just if you don't mind, just slowly uh, scroll down. It's a very, everything on the menu is going to be available at all times that we are open. Each one of you will find something that appeals to your palate. <clears throat> um, this site is villagein.com. Feel free to, um, to go to the site in your spare time and just kind of start selecting the things that you're going to be ordering on at every <laughs> day. If you want, because there's going to be a lot of people coming, so if you know exactly what you want, just have it, have it written down on a piece of paper to your server. So as you can see, I mean, it's a, it's a robust menu. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we have to get to the 
pies also. So there's, um, <laughs> Andreas, you see where it says pies up there? Yeah, please click on that for a moment and we can just kind of. Honest to goodness, these are award-winning pies, the best pies John. in America. John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. We're working on those. <laughs> oh, really? Where is that? And that's over at Bill Miller. I can get sugar free and lemon pie. Nowhere else in town. I'm going to have to ask about that. I don't know. That's a, that's I'm not the only diabetic. I'm diabetic. I hear you. I hear you. But as you can see, that's quite a selection. Uh, yes. Um, Any questions or comments? What's your seating capacity? 154. It's going to be on uh, 97. I think the address, uh, I don't know who assigns addresses in the city, who's responsible for that. I think it's going to be something like 1131 West Oak Lawn, um, next to the new uh, South Trust Bank that's being constructed on 97, across the street from the Prosperity Bank. Uh, we'll have plenty of parking. We, we own a lot that we have chosen not to develop right now, which is adjacent to where we are putting the restaurant because we expect a lot of people, and uh, we think the overflow parking is going to go there. Okay. And it will draw a lot of people that uh, are uh, our guests at Chaparral Place as well. Mayor, Mayor I'd just like to add that uh, on what Asif said, I can't commend the staff enough. This has been an ongoing discussion back and forth for some 30 months. Uh, even at Eagle Ford Consortium conferences, Anwar and Asif and I have turned our backs to folks to discuss this project, and they kept assuring me they were working on it. And uh, they have been one of the very best working partners for economic development that the city of Pleasanton has enjoyed in my 30 months. Um, they believe in doing things right, they show you what they're going to do, and they do what they show you they're going to do. And uh, we, we couldn't ask for anything more. And he drove 200 miles tonight to do this presentation. I appreciate that. I'm heading back to Houston right as, as soon as I get excused. <laughs> but I want to answer every, every question. Well, we can't. Ma really, the, uh, this council meetings are just for council deliberation, so we really can't take questions from the audience. Oh, okay. 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 Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Number 14 discussion action include the planning of a new fire station in the fiscal year 2015 budget. Fire Chief. Chief Garris. This isn't about a new restaurant, but uh, we're going to discuss tonight the plan and design of a, a phase for the new fire station to be built in the 1500 block of uh, Goodwin Street. Uh, there are many areas of fire protection that the Insurance Service Office's ISO looks at when determining our, our rating. The lower the rating the city has, the lower the homeowner's insurance is for our citizens. As we sit right now, we are at ISO Class 3. This is definitely good for a city our size, but we can make it even better and safer. Life safety for our citizens and firefighters is paramount when determining what we should do as a city. The city is presently working to improve water flows throughout the city by increasing the size of water mains and extending mains to new areas. They have added and replaced many fire hydrants throughout the city. The ISO puts major emphasis on water supply and needed fire flow for the <coughs> structures. <coughs> Another area that the ISO is concerned with is the placement of our current fire stations and apparatus. We have the main station located at 219 West Hunt Street and the other location at 1422nd Street. I cannot stress enough the importance of bringing our services to the citizens of Pleasanton to meet the minimum standards set by the ISO. Right now, the placement of our stations does not cover the Pulliam Drive and West Oak Lawn areas. Within those standards, ISO standards as follows. For coverage by an engine company, it is measured by a distance of one and a half miles, and a ladder company is measured by a distance of driving two and a half miles. Uh, these are not measured as a crow flies, but as the engine drives up and down the streets. So you, would, you would think you'd get better coverage, but it may only be three or four blocks, and you've got that mile and a half already. So, 
With the master plan in place, it states that all residents in the city should be within a mile and a half of emergency services. This is not the case at the present time. Currently, our main station at 219 West Hunt Street would cover west on Goodwin to just past Oak Haven, and on 97 going west also to Oak Haven. While going out towards 476, the station stops short of Encino Drive. The North Town Station covers out 281 to Pecan Tree Community and out 97 <coughs> east to LA Electric. Going in the direction of 476, North Town goes to Yellowstone Drive and down Pulliam to Continental Drive. What we're asking to, uh, for tonight is direction from the council to do a feasibility study for the placement of a station in the 1500 block of West Goodwin Street. This property is already owned by the city. With the uh, placement of this station, the fire department would have better access to Highway 97, West Oakland Corridor, with the amount of traffic going through the city at the present time, which is uh, estimated at 25,000 vehicles a day. Uh, easier access is needed to afford a quicker and safe response. The new station would expand our coverage at the intersection of Campbell Lane and West Goodwin and bring more citizens within the ISO coverage area. Not to mention bringing the city closer to the, meeting the master plan goal of all citizens within a mile and a half of emergency services. Even with placement of the new station at this location, the uh, areas of Pulliam Drive and Jamestown will still not have ISO coverage. Future consideration should be given to place a station <coughs> out on 476 around the Coastal Bend College area to help with Oak Forest and possibly another station on 97 Airport Road area for more coverage in uh, Pleasant Jordan Corridor. The main station has served the city well for 42 years, but has reached its end. With the doors only 10 foot high and uh, with only single bays, <coughs> an upgrade is needed to meet the current times of new state new fire apparatus. The city at some point will have to paid fire personnel, and this new station will have sleeping quarters for eight firefighters, a training room, kitchen facilities, and office spaces. The station will have three double bays to allow two trucks per bay and be a drive-through station. There will be 15-foot doors to accommodate the new apparatus being built today. Apparatus today are being built taller and shorter than in previous years. The thinking is that the trucks have more mobility inside city streets. Uh, the two options for you all, direct the city staff to begin the plan and design phase of the new station and <clears throat> be included in the fiscal 2015 budget or do not direct the city staff to begin plan and design for the new station. Our recommendation, of course, is to direct the city staff to begin the plan and design phase for the new station and include in the tw fiscal 2015 budget. <coughs> do you have any questions? Mayor? Mr. Gagos. I move to approve city staff to begin the plan to begin the plan and design phase for a new fire station and include it in the physical year 2015 budget. Second. So we move to second direct city staff to begin a plan and design phase for a new fire station and include it in the fiscal year 2015 budget. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor. I, Mr. Best. Uh, one of the things I'd like us to think about <coughs> when you start uh, looking at the design and concept, I, it's come to my attention that the property behind the police station, which is about 7.65 acres, will be available for sale. And I could envision something where the main fire station ends up there, but we still, at the same time, look to put an annex station out near the airport area so that we're starting to have that centralized hub, get, get the main station, of course, out of the water, and uh, have it over there, right there by the police station, a nice uh, location that gets to all areas of town, but then start building those annexes uh, over a period of time. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mayor? Cicero. Um I would just like to direct this to uh, Mr. Pearson and to the chief. Um, when we are looking at this uh, for planning, purposes, will we be looking at several different locations? Mm -hmm. um, that was what I understood. So um, I certainly support looking at more than the good one area. Thank you. That's it. Other discussion? Yes, Mayor, and I agree Thanks. about location also. Um, 
I don't know how far is our, our station that's on Hunt Street versus the one that uh, Mr. Bass, uh, Bess just said. I don't think that is, that's just like maybe a half a mile difference. I, it's not that far from where our present uh, uh, location is. But yes, I, I agree with Jenny that location should be considered uh, where it's gonna benefit what Chuck has just mentioned to us for the insurance purposes also. Uh, the, the new station we're proposing does encompass more new housing to fall in the ISO. The <coughs> location that Mr. Pess is talking about <coughs> would allow us for expansion if we ever wanted to expand uh, to a different degree what we have right now. Uh, the lot we're proposing, which is fine, you know, for the station we're proposing is great, but for future expansion, I don't know about that. But Chief. if we did through the trail property, we would have to build another station to get the coverage. Like he said, build a substation out by the airport or somewhere. What's critical about this ISO rating from the state, it not only quantifies what your firefighting capabilities are through response times and fire flows, but it also directly influences homeowners insurance premiums. The lower that ISO rating is, the lower homeowners insurance premiums are. When I became chief, we were a five in the city, and when the ISO came, I believe it was in uh, the year 2000, they're due to come back. They come every 10, give or take. Uh, we qualified to be the three, and at that time, we missed a two, I think, by four points, which is excellent. <clears throat> at that time, the city, the water main was not looped, but now it's looped through the, the city's, you know, master plan and stuff, looping the city with water. Uh, we have the ladder truck now, we have new trucks. Uh, our training, which they count, hasn't changed any. Uh, but I'm thinking the water supply and the equipment we have, and if we spread the equipment out a little bit, we should be at two, I, I would believe, next time. That's almost unheard of, too. Okay. When the ISO rating first was developed, the only city in the state of Texas that received a two was Plano. That's a difficult rating to attain. Other discussion? Not proceed to the vote. In favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed, the same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Item number 15, discussion action directs the city staff to incorporate the expansion of Longhorn Museum for fiscal year 2015 budget. Our museum director, Ms. Burgess. Now. 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 You threw me off putting it on the. <laughs> I did. I did. I think the last time I saw it, I was told to sign, so I wasn't. Inside expansion of the museum. Uh, upon completion of the Civic Center, we are no longer going to rent the big room in the back where the animals are. It's a very large room. And this creates a big open area. For those of you that have been there, you know how large it is. And with, and I've got a few uh, examples, but um, we could span inside the museum without having to add on physically anywhere on the outside. Um, we're just crammed to the ceiling already, going up as, as high as we possibly can with a few, well, I won't say a few, but with some portable walls, purchase of some portable walls and some more display cases, we can create rooms or areas back there, give us great relief in the front. For instance, we've got, we were thinking uh, a music room. We have two antique pianos, two antique pump organs, and a lot of the old KBOB, KBOP radio station equipment. That would be one area. We've got a coronation gown, antique wedding dresses, could be period clothing, just for some example. Local artist paintings could go on a couple of walls. Anyway, that, that gives you an idea of what we want to try to do. Uh, it'll give the museum a lot more, a much more appealing, look and we have large crowds coming in now a lot more people and by freeing up the space in the front with stuff going to the back it will give us more room to expand our information center and that is really booming these days the people that come in for help it's absolutely amazing and that's what we try to do is guide them and help them and tell them what a wonderful place Pleasanton is and what all it's getting and has and um, so that would free up the front to do that. We're very excited about the prospect of possibly being able to do this. 
<clears throat> we hope you are too. Options, of course, direct city staff to incorporate the expansion of the museum in the fiscal year 2015 budget. <clears throat> direct city staff not to incorporate the expansion of the museum in the fiscal year 2015 budget. Mayor, I'm oh, sorry. Course is to direct city staff to incorporate the expansion museum. Mayor, this is sorry. Uh, I'd like to go ahead to make a motion to direct the city staff to incorporate the expansion of the Longhorn Museum in the uh, fiscal year 2015 budget. Second. It's moved and seconded to direct the city staff to incorporate the expansion of the Longhorn Museum in the fiscal year 2015 budget. Any discussion? No. The vote is in favor of the motion. Please raise your right hand. Close. Same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Ms. Burgess. Thank you so very much for your time. He voted Thank for you, uh, affirmative. Item number 16 is presentation discussion to the Minneapolis Coast County Appraisal District Budget 2014. Ms. Carterness and Mr. Rodriguez. Oh, there you are. Baby. I don't know if Mr. Rodriguez informed you, but he had a medical appointment prior to uh, the meeting, so he couldn't be here. So. Thank you. Um, and I believe that you've received our information regarding the budget amendment, and I'm just here to answer any questions that you may have um, regarding that. Just give you a little background behind it. It's a technology uh, purchase that we're looking to make utilizing surplus funds that were available from our 2013 budget. So you are going to get a pretty good size refund to begin with. So we're requesting that you allow us to amend the budget and apply a portion of your refund from 2013 to that purchase. And you're still going to get a refund. Um, I had given Mr. Pearson some information on this, but the city would still stand to get back $4,032.24 credited to your next two pro rata payments for the 2014 budget. Okay. Any discussion for Ms. Carnes? Yes, sir. No. Okay. Well, I guess we move to item number 17. Discussion and possible action to amend the Atascos County Appraisal District Budget for 2014. Mayor. Mr. Geigos. I move to approve the amended budget. I'm sorry. I move to approve the amended I'm, I move to approve amending the Atascosa County Appraisal District budget for 2014. Second. I moved and seconded to amend the Atascosa County Appraisal District budget for 2014. Any discussion? None will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post the same sign. Motion carries. <coughs> Item number 18 is presentation discussion on the Atascosa County Appraisal District budget for 2015. Ms. Carter. Uh, again, I believe you already received a copy of the budget. I do want to state that the current 15 budget that you're looking at has that technology program in there because we weren't sure how the entities were going to, as a whole, proceed with the amendment. And should that amendment have failed, we needed to prepare for it in 2015. So um, if the amendment passes and through the Board of Directors on the 17th, I believe, is our special call meeting, then we will be reducing this budget, the 2015 budget, by the amount of $39,878.75, removing that technology back out of there. Okay. The only portion that will stay that's related to the technology is the annual maintenance fee. That runs us right about $8,200 a year to maintain that technology. Okay. Mayor. Mr. Gagos. I move to approve the Atascos County Appraisal District proposed budget for 2015. Second. Second. I moved and seconded to approve the Atascos County Appraisal District budget, proposed budget for 2015. Any discussion? Mayor. Ms. Israel. Uh, I'm looking at this, and I think item number 18 was That's just correct. presentation it's, and I, discussion. I jumped to 19. I apologize for that. Uh, yes, and I do have some discussion. I, I was just going to add something, if you don't mind, as well. Go ahead. It, it's a little premature. We haven't held our public hearing yet. That's going to be in July. This is just for your information. So to take action on the 2015 budget would be premature. Our board could still make changes to that budget at this time. Okay. That was appreciated. Although we, we do have a motion, and it has been seconded, so we do have to deal with the business. Um, uh, Mayor? So we can continue with the motion, or you can table it and uh, go back to item number 18. I would move that we continue agenda item number 19. Well, you don't, you don't have to move it. We've already got it oh, in front of us. I mean, yeah. the, only, the only way we can not process this business right now is to table it. Mayor? This is real. I would move to table that item. Second. That would be number 19. Actually, to postpone it. Um, actually, 
Hopefully it would be to table Will it. Will be to table it? Yes, ma'am. Oh, gonna... for later discussion, oh, yes. Tabling That's is for in the same meeting. Yes. Postponing is for sometime in the future. I and do get that. Could, could you read back the... <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, just made a motion, and it was seconded by Mr. Best, and it was to table item number 19. Yes, sorry. So what does that do to my motion? Am I nothing? That? Nothing at all. It's still it's still there. It's just hanging out right now. <laughs> if this if this passes, I'll explain after the after the vote. But if okay. we table the motion right now, then we'll have to bring it back from the table after we just finish the discussion. It's yes. not a very complicated process. But we are voting now on tabling agenda item number nineteen. So if you're in favor of tabling agenda item number nineteen, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Item is tabled. So back to item number 19, uh, 18. Yes, <laughs> Mayor. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, what I wanted to, to discuss, and I do appreciate uh, that you uh, brought up the fact that we're not even at public hearing stage yet. So I really do appreciate that. I did. I did go over the budget, and the only thing that I did not see. Um, was anything to do with renovations, remodeling, or repairs of the building, and um, I would and I would like to have this on record if possible, because Mr. Rodriguez, when he came last time, he made um, uh, he talked to us and gave us some good news about the building itself. He said that there was no more issues as far as asbestos was concerned and that there was no need to build a new building. And so then my question to him was, well, don't we need to do some sort of repairs? And that I would like to see that. And that was before y'all went through your budget process. So I was hoping to see some sort of directions towards repairing the existing building because we've had a number of issues with the building. I prefer to see it in the budget than do it in an emergency session. Okay. Uh, were you aware that we did uh, substantial repairs in April to our building? I absolutely knew that you did as far as the roof and the fascia board and all that. And that was an emergency that was discussed, if I'm not mistaken, back in August that there was issues way back in August with this. I was familiar exactly uh, when you started repairing right. it. So, and so because of that, uh, I feel like it's I would like to see the appraisal district look to see what else they may need to do in that building and then I would like to see it in the budget so we can we can help you guys have the building you want. And and I and we appreciate your support on that and we are going to be looking into what our options are um as far as the building itself there's not really anything else we need to do that unless like a, a commode or something like that breaks. Um the the roof and the fascia boards were what we needed to do to sustain the integrity of the building. And uh, the board at this point has decided that they don't want to put any additional funds into any type of remodeling of that building because we have outgrown it already. So they want to look in the future at possibly relocating. But this that is something, as, as the city is aware, we have to go through a lot of steps through the government code. I understand that. And so we don't want to pocket your money. We can't pocket your money if, if we budget for it. Um, we we have to return our funds. I, I understand 6.06 .06 of the tax right. code. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. So there was no way for us to budget for possibly relocating. That's something that we would take on as it came to fruition. And the board would either ask for an amendment or they would propose the project to start in the next fiscal year as to not put any undue so Pressure that's on. why you're not going to upgrade to the ADA specs that you asked about three years ago either, correct? You're grandfathered in on that right yeah, now. Yeah, until you touch the building. Right. Okay, so that's what I, uh, that was exactly what I was asking because it was my understanding that y'all, and maybe Mr. Rodriguez, uh, maybe he didn't just explain it exactly as you had intended for that discussion to go. So uh, my understanding now is that you're looking at your possibilities and we may see over the next couple years, you begin the process to consider other options as far as a new location. Yes, and several entities have um, expressed a, a 
desire for us to relocate to Jordanton, mm -hmm. where we would be closer to the, the county seat, the courthouse, and um, the tax office. So that's an option that, yes. that we'll be looking at. Uh, probably the first option we'd be looking at. The problem is, is there's not a whole lot of available space right there. Right. Um, so those are some things that the board is going to have to consider. Uh, I, I totally appreciate it, but I, I just wanted to make sure that we don't wind up in any more situations where we're looking at having to do repairs uh, at the ninth hour if they're not in the right. budget. Right, and, and we do right. have a building repair fund in our budget. And unfortunately, it wasn't enough to cover what we were dealing with with the expense on the roof. I understood that. I actually was there for the presentation of why the roof needed to be redone. But I do appreciate it. Thank you. That was all my question. Thank you. Thank you. All right. uh, I don't believe there's anything else. Just a note of parliamentary procedure. If we're going to bring back the motion, it's either to take it from the table or move to uh, resume consideration. It would have to be done on the motion to bring it back to discuss tonight. Well, that's agenda item number 19. For yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're, we're moving on to agenda, back to agenda number 19. So the proper way would be to either resume consideration or take from the table agenda item number 19. But we voted to table it already. To get it back before us, we have to either uh, move okay. to take it from the table or resume consideration. I make a motion that we resume consideration. Of Second. Our 19. You still remain your second? Second. All right, it's not debatable, not amenable. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Motion is resumed for consideration. So we have before us, could you please re read the motion for agenda item number 19? I believe it was to, to approve to approve the Addis Coast County Appraisal District a proposed budget for 2015. Any discussion? Mayor? Ms. Israel. Um, the only discussion that I have here, as uh, Ms. Cardenas uh, pointed out to us, that we really don't have a completed budget yet and, and we'll probably receive that. Um, I would think if there's any changes to it in the next. Right. The day after our public hearing in the board special call board meeting in June, you will receive a, a changed budget should the amendment pass. And we will be sending that out to the entities with our, our public hearing date as well. Um, we'll re-notify you of the public hearing date. So yes. I would just ask the council to consider uh, uh, not approving the budget at this time and await for the amended uh, budget to come to us and then immediately get it on the agenda. Mayor, I have a question. Uh, let me make a comment real quick. My only problem with that would be that if we do this now and it doesn't get amended, then we're done. If they have to bring it back, then we can deal with it as we have to. Uh, Mr. Gaggs. There has been other entities that have passed just uh, proposed 2015 budget already, haven't they? No. no. I've, I've informed them that it would be premature because our board of directors has not approved it yet. Okay. So the, the amendment, yes, you're the third entity to approve the 14 amendment, but the 15 budget has been, or no action has been taken. Call for the question. There's no second, so the question is not called. Oh. The question has to be moved and seconded. And voted on. And voted on, correct. Any other discussion? <clears throat> if not, we'll proceed to the vote. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Uh, I didn't see Ms. Pacifica. How'd you vote? I didn't feel. Fort? Fort. Fort, yeah. Uh, Okay. So well, it's three dies for the lack of a tie. What was it? Three to three? <coughs> three. Item number 20 is discussion action. Thank you. To grant, thank, thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Discussion action to grant a variance to the animal control ordinance uh, for 15 Quar Hollow. Our chief. And I believe now this is Mr. and Ms. Schaefer, right? Okay. I didn't forget. Thank you again, Mayor and Council. Mr. and Mrs. Charles Shaker, Chuck and Debbie. Uh, they reside at 15 Quail Hollow. They've requested a variance to ordinance number 1340 regarding the regulating, regulating the keeping of animals. Uh, they have two horses and they reside on 1.63 acres. They're the epitome of 
responsible animal owners. Uh, their, their pens are meticulous and their horses, their animals are well cared for. Uh, this ordinance was passed in September of 2008 Excuse me. and it's never been enforced. And uh, I consulted with local veterinarian, Dr. John Clater, about this and he he supports the the variants and uh, I'm asking that we recommend that the City Council grant a variance to ordinance number 1340 which would allow Debbie Schaefer to keep and take care of no more than two horses and or other livestock on her 1.63 acre property which is located at 15 Quell Hollow. Mayor, Mr. Gallo, sir. I move to approve the variance to ordinance number 1340 which would allow Debbie Schaefer to keep and take care of no more than two horses and or other livestock on her 1.63 acre property, which is located at 15 Quail Hollow. Second. To so move to second to grant the variance of ordinance number 1340, which would allow Debbie Schaefer to keep and take care of no more than two horses and or other livestock on her 1.63 acre property, which is located at 15 Quail Hollow Drive. Any discussion? Yes, I just want to Guys. tell Debbie that I read her mother's article, and that was uh, very meaningful, and uh, good luck. I think it's all going to work out. Other discussion? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Best. Uh, I understand the two horses, but I need to understand what does end or other livestock mean? Two horses doesn't become two horses and two cows or two what? buffaloes. Or, right. Only Just two, two horses. Total of two. two. Mm -hmm. Total of two. Yeah. Other discussion? I'm not proceeded to vote on the favor of All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, Thank you, you, Council. Item number 21 is discussion and action for the designation of demolition of properties at 4th Street, property ID uh, 28017, 503 Horrell Street, property 29081, 719 Mansfield Street, property 59037, 1317 Virginia Street, property ID 3649N, 325 Franklin Boulevard, property 29514, at Community Development Services. Mayor, Council. Uh, Earl Peterson, ex-code enforcement officer. Uh, <laughs> um, in the uh, <clears throat> community developments effort, continuing effort with, thankfully, for, with the, the council support, we are continuing to demolish hazardous and, and dilapidated buildings in, throughout the city. Uh, they have selected, community development has selected five more properties that fit this classification. Um, the building official, John Rainey, has inspected the properties, and you can see in your packet his reports. And also the, code enforcement officer, the new code enforcement officer, Jeff Flores, has inspected the properties on his side, and that should be in your, and pictures are available also. Um, we're asking the council to, uh, to go. determine that these properties are dilapidated and or hazardous and allow the city to either demolish or make sure that these properties are brought up to code within a specified time and that the property owners will be uh, notified during, after this meeting about the process that's gonna be taking place. Okay. Mayor, I have a couple of questions. Mr. Gagas. Yes, three out of the four are in District 4 and I have a question on the um, 325 Franklin, um, I noticed that I guess the brother came in and got a permit for demolition and was allowed an additional 45 days. Is uh, that he, correct? He hasn't uh, turned in the permit yet. He got the application yeah. but has not. He has not submitted the permit back. Exactly. And I would like to also inform the council that the last time this property has been on the agenda before. The last time uh, the property owners came in, did the same thing, said that they would clean it up. They came out one time, cleared the grass and the brush, and never returned to that property. This is about building, bringing the building and the structure up to code, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. yes. This, is, this is about the building, and of course the property has to be cleared also, the brush and stuff. But uh, it was on before. It was not brought up to code or demolished. 
the property was cleared, and so we're coming back to this property again. So this will be the second time. Uh, so has, go ahead. I'm sorry. Has this property already been posted in a letter sent to the owner? Yes. Are we through our uh, notification period? The 60 days for the initial notification, yes. Okay. So if the council gives us direction tonight, our process will be that they have to bring the building up to code in 60 days. Well, no. It'll or be what? Probably 45 days. 45, 45 days. days. So they've already had 60 days. Okay. Okay, my second question is the Mansfield, um, 719 Mansfield. I spoke to Mr. Reynolds. He was going to meet with city staff at 2 o'clock today, and I don't know what the outcome of that is. It's kind of a strange, strange situation because the structure does not belong to him. The property does. The lien would be against the property. So was there any resolution there, or what was the outcome Yes, we of that? talked about this, and uh, uh, Mr. Reynolds is going to, if... It is deemed to be dilapidated and hazardous. Mr. Reynolds, he's going to work with us to do the best thing we can to get that off of the property. So it's going to be a joint effort. Uh, since he's the property owner, he can take a formal eviction, and that'll help us because technically it's a mobile home, so uh, destroying it's kind of a, a gray area, and we'll have to have the city's attorneys uh, on that. But we do have to clear it off of the property, and he can do the eviction notice. And also, I noticed that on the paperwork, I don't think he has met the 60 days yet because he was he received a notice, a certified letter on May the 13th or 15th, and that's not 60 days. For the landowner, for Mr. Reynolds? Yes. Yeah. So where does that, is he still going to be included in? Well, if he's working with the city, that it's no, no, it just means he has to be notified within six days. And he has been. He's come in, talked about it. So notification has been served to him, and he's and he's replied to us about it. So he's okay with this moving forward to demolish it? Yes. Mr. Yes, yes. Mr. Carrico, just to kind of explain, he... there was a confusion of the property. So we sent letters to the mobile home owner, and we sent letters to the property owner. Kind of an unusual situation for the two different owners. We did send it out, but... The appraisal district had the wrong address, so there was some footwork that we had to go visit with the appraisal district, find the right address. We gave him the 60 days, but as we explained to him, we still have to follow the due process. He will get the 60 days, but we're here ready to bring it up to front for a vote to follow the due process, and then he'll have that additional time to also get there. He has come forward and expressed his concern that he does want to get this, this property off, but he's concerned with the lien and stuff, stuff of that nature. So we, tell him, we, we still have to follow the due process to get this to make sure that we follow through on our, our uh, assignment that y'all had given us. His concern is trying to minimize his costs, and, we, and we're trying to help him out on that, what we can do, but also uh, uh, for all explain to him that to help us get this process, we have to, because it's almost, the, the property is basically abandoned. The guy doesn't live there, we try to make contact, he's abandoned, it's allowing, uh, uh, if you see one of the pictures, uh, I'll yeah, get back there, but there's yeah. feces all over the place. <coughs> uh, yeah, yeah, the the, main, the owners of the property, the, the the main owners that are listed on the on the trail are deceased. Are deceased. Uh, there's transit. You can tell there's evidence of transits. There's a makeshift uh, cap on the back that lawn chairs <coughs> almost looks like uh, homeless people are actually living there. They have a makeshift stove in the back. Uh, this is just in the community adjacent to the school. Children walking by, passing by, and you know we we think it's not only uh, well, it's hazardous to the kids, you know, going to school back and forth, so we need to take this and look at it. And Mr. Reynolds expressed his concern, and he just wants to make sure he's doing his part, and we are going to work with him hand in hand and see what we can do to. Mayor, Mayor, I have a question. In you all's professional opinion, is this facility or this structure hazardous, possibly hazardous to human health? Yes, it is. In, in my personal opinion, this is one of the ones that uh, that I've seen that it, it can be rehabbed. If, if you walk and you see the structural members, yeah. you, you have to actually jump to the structural members. You can't even walk between the structural members because you're, you're going to fall through. I mean, if, if, if this is open to anybody get in there. You get the wrong person in there of underage, yeah. and you're, you're looking for something tragic. Yeah. And Mr. Gagos, if I can address this 60 day window, when, when Mr. Peterson and I first looked at these next sites that are before you all tonight, 
we agreed the best thing to do was to go ahead and move for the 60-day window, send the letters out, notify everybody you need to bring it up to code before we brought it to council. It's just there was a discrepancy with the, with, with the appraisal district and who was actually the owner. That's why this particular facility hasn't reached the full 60 days. Uh, but but I think the rest have had their full 60-day notice, correct? Council, this is pretty cut and dry. Mayor? Yes. Ms. Israel. Yes, uh, I would like to make a motion to move for the designation of de demolition of properties at 4th Street, property ID number 28017-503 Harl Street, property ID 29081-719 Mansfield Street, property ID 59037 317 Virginia Street, <coughs> property ID 30649 and uh, 325 Franklin Boulevard, and property ID number 29514. Second. Moved and seconded to designate for demolition the properties, demolition of properties at 4th Street, property ID 28017, 503 Hall Street, property 29081. Uh, 700, 7100 Mansfield Street, property 50037, 317 Virginia Street, property ID 30649 and 305 Franklin Boulevard, property 29514. Any discussion? Yes, I have a quick question. Mr. Gagos. Okay, going back to the uh, demolition permit fee, uh, I mean permit, you come and you pay your fee, you have 45 days, and if you bring it up or clear it out yourself, you're okay. Is that how that works? Well, the, the demolition permit itself, once it's granted, is good for a year. You have six months to start it under the permit process. But because we're designating a, a hazardous structure, we're imposing a 45-day limit on Okay, and, and he doesn't incur any fees. If he comes and he cleans it up and follows through, and we, as a city, doesn't have to go out there and render services, then he doesn't get the lien or whatever it just yeah but there is a fee to that permit that permit the demolition yes. permit and so it's you have based to fill out your application and bring it in with your money and it's based on the volume okay. of that and we really need to bring the discussion back to the okay the i'm motion right. thank you mayor any discussion mr mayor uh i would recommend in the future that when we have all these different properties that we make them individual uh, items instead of just lumping them all together so that way they can get their individual due diligence that's all. Any other discussion on the motion? Not proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post the same sign. Motion carries. <laughs> Item number 22 is discussion. Thank you. Discussion action to direct the city manager and staff to look at feasibility and cost to add security cameras, playscape, and a park ranger, and present findings to council for consideration for fiscal year 2015 budget. And it's council member Pacifica. Yes, I'd like to direct uh, the city manager and staff to look for to add the feasibility and cost of adding security cameras for playscape and a park ranger and present the findings to city council. Second. Uh, was that in the form of a motion? Yes. Okay. It has been moved and seconded to direct the city manager and staff to look at feasibility and cost to add security cameras for playscape and a park ranger and present findings to council for consideration in the fiscal year 2015 budget. Any discussion? Yes, Mayor? I have a quick question. Mr. Gagos. Yeah, the park ranger, would this be a full-time staff? I think that's what the feasibility study would probably, that's what we'll probably get out of it to find out if that's warranted. Okay. Mayor? Ms. Israel. Uh, I just wanted to know if we needed to add, um, uh, to bring back for the 2015 budget. No. Okay, I don't, I don't see that necessary. Thank you. Other discussion? If none will proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <laughs> Item number 23 is discussion action on scheduling a citywide hazmat and use tire, use tire, huh, pickup in the summer of 2014 using reserve from some of the sales tax revenue to pay for it. Council Member Israel. Uh, Mayor, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion Please. to um, uh, schedule a citywide hazmat and use tire pickup in the summer of 2014 using refer, reserve funds from sales tax revenue to pay for it. I second it. It's been moved and seconded to schedule a citywide hazmat and used tire pickup in the summer of 2014 using reserve funds for sales tax revenue to pay for it. Um, any discussion? Yes. Mr. Gagos. Uh, what approximately is the cost to the city for this? At this time, we don't know. We had included monies uh, 
uh, in the 2015 budget this evening, we understood that uh, the county is interested in partnering with us. We have had indirect contact with two different companies at this point that can provide that hazmat cleanup. Uh, there needs to be some definition about what are we going to allow. If it's, if it's a household hazmat waste disposal and cleanup, you know, we, we would look at, you know, five-gallon containers or less. It's going to be almost too incumbent to look at 55-gallon drums come rolling in. Uh, we'd, we'd like to contact these companies. We'd like to properly plan for it, work with the county, and have something scheduled. A lot of these hazmat cleanups take place late, late in the fall or early, early in the spring. But, you know, council discretion. But we have included, I think, was it $30,000? I think it's about $30,000 we put in the budget. Uh, they will be presented to uh, council in two weeks uh, in the form of the draft budget. Okay. Mayor. Other discussion, Ms. Israel. Uh, yes, I just want to bring us up to date on this. We haven't had a hazmat pickup in six years, and we went ahead and we tried scheduling a couple of them, and uh, the very last one that got scheduled had to be canceled <clears throat> due to the fact that the um, city was in the process of moving sewer lines through the park and we weren't able to access it. And I certainly would uh, hope that uh, because it's been so long, we wouldn't again extend it even further. And um, then maybe in the future we'll have a chance to uh, schedule something the way it would be normally done. Is Are you it? asking for it to be in the 2015 budget, Mrs. Israel? Uh, not on this item. Okay. This yeah. item is specific to be using reserve funds just for this one. We'll do the best we can. I think it's almost impossible to expect staff in the next 60 days to have a hazmat cleanup. I mean, we'll do the best we can. Well, Mayor, I have a, another question. Mr. Gales. Now, this is just for residents, or is it also going to include commercial and businesses? Council discretion. Because that could get very costly. Absolutely. If, uh, Absolutely. We get into commercial allowed to, and I agree that maybe this needs to be done, but there's, um, I'm concerned about the cost and also if it's going to be open to commercial business and the overflow of, of uh, the people participating in it. Mayor? Ms. Israel. I would entertain an amendment that would make it specific for residents only and um, for the uh, city manager to bring back the information so we can schedule one. And if it's later, it's fine. Now, this is Pleasanton residence. Yeah. Is that correct? Yes. That would be course. Pleasanton, city of Pleasanton residence. We'd verify that by water utility bill in the present month with a pictured ID sure. to match that water bill. And you said the county would uh, partner with us? The judge is here. I'm, I'm looking right at her. <laughs> <laughs> judge, could you elaborate? Just a little bit. I'd like to have it on the agenda for Monday to let the commissioners know what is being discussed at this time. Because the last time we did partner with the city, I believe we did it twice when Mrs. Coronado was the uh, city manager. And it worked out well. And we only did it for the household. And it was tires. We did not allow any business people to come in because some of it, because we worked it, so we knew who was business, who was personal. And so some of the business people, we told them, no, you're going to have to get out of this line. In other words, the business people know how they're supposed to properly dispose of those particular items. But it's hard for the residential individuals to be able to get rid of a one-gallon can of paint after they got through painting a bathroom. Who knows? And you've got this leftover, and how do you dispose of it properly? And I would be in favor of, like I said, taking it back to Commissioner's Court Monday for household use. I agree. Not business use. I think my only problem is the scheduling now that Mr. Pearson's brought that up. But other than that, I mean. We'll, we'll do the very best we can, Council. I will promise. It's you fine. Know. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Mr. Sines. Yes, I uh, really think, and I've been thinking seriously about businesses also because businesses are in the city limits of Pleasanton, Texas, and the citizens also. So uh, I think <clears throat> to myself, no, I don't know how the rest feel, but I think there would be a, a lot of conflict and uh, friction because 
they'll be asking why were we left out? How, why weren't we asked? Or why weren't we informed about? See if we could do something about it also to become part of it of this disposal happening. And I don't think I could support this item. Uh, Not other, at all. Any other discussion? It'd be too costly just for one, and it'd be a lot of friction. <clears throat> other discussion. Now proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Call the same sign. Motion carries. Item number 24 is discussion action to make the uh, citywide hazmat and use tire pickup an annual event and add it to the 2015 budget. Ms. Israel. Yes, Mayor. I'd like to go ahead to, uh, and make a motion uh, to um, direct the city manager to make the uh, citywide hazmat and use tire pickup an annual event and uh, add it to the 2015 budget after pricing it and bringing the amount to the council for approval. I second it. To move and second direct the city manager to make a citywide hazmat and use tire pickup an annual event and add it to the 2015 budget after pricing, and I can't even read my own writing, and, and bringing the amount back to council for approval. Any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Best. I would amend it to include for Pleasanton, for Pleasanton residents only. I'll second the amendment. <clears throat> so moved and seconded to include for Pleasanton residents only. Any discussion? Not proceeded the vote. Is in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Amendment carries. <laughs> Mr. Rabazzo, would you? Well, Mr. The, the, Mayor, I voted against I, I, you. So noted. Uh, the new motion is to direct city manager make citywide hazmat and use tire pick up an annual event and add it to the 2015 budget after pricing and bringing it to council for approval for Pleasanton residents only. Yes. Any discussion? <clears throat> None. We'll proceed to the vote. Those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Both the same sign. Motion carries. Item number 25 is uh, the regular session of June 5th, 2014. is here by recess to hold an executive session pursuant of Texas Government Code, Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code, subchapter D, as it pertains to consultation with attorney, 551.071. Executive session matters may be discussed and acted upon if appropriate in open okay. session. <laughs> okay, Mayor, for the record, I am going to recuse myself from executive session agenda A, but do call me for B. So noted. Thank you. The regular session of the City Council of the City of Pleasant, Texas, was hereby reconvened at 8.45 p.m. Item number 20 is discussion and possible action concerning complaints, claims, requests, and demands from Mr. Ernest Trino. Mayor. Ms. Israel. Uh, yes, I'd like to make a motion. Please. Uh, to direct the City Attorney to move at his discretion as discussed in executive session. I second it. It's moved and seconded to direct the City Attorney to move at his discretion as discussed in executive session. Any discussion? There's none. We'll proceed to the vote. Those in favor, please raise your right hand. Post same sign. Motion. Mayor, carries. I'm uh, abstaining for the record. So noted. Item number 29, discussion of possible action concerning the city manager's contract. Mayor. Mr. Gaggs. I move to uh, direct the city attorney to drop the amendment to the city manager's contract as discussed in executive session. I second it. It's been moved and seconded to direct the city attorney to draw up the amendments to the city manager's contract as discussed in executive session. Any discussion? None will proceed to the vote. And those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Oppose the same sign. Motion carries. Item number 30 is review of the bills. Speak no, now if you sir. have any questions on the bills. No, sir. If not, we'll move to agenda item number 31. Which Mayor, is I move to adjourn. Second. Moving to second, we adjourn. All those in favor of the motion, please raise your right hand. Oppose the same sign. Meeting is adjourned at 8.47 p.m.